in fresh trouble. A CID names him a suspect in recent cases of kidnappings and fire outbreaks across the country. The NDC is already condemning the CID action as Ms. Ampofo is asked to report himself for interrogation. No amount of harassment of our national chairman will save the MPP from defeat. Indeed, it is a sign of desperation. Also tonight, police in Voter Region arrest 81 members of the movement agitating for an independent state. We'll hear from the Coalition of Voter Youth as they kick against the declaration uh, of independence. No, I don't think that is the right way. There is no need to go out and say that you are going to declare independence. Already, already the High Court has remanded into police custody seven persons arrested in the Voter Region for the alleged attempt to declare Western Togoland independent. And how much did it cost to issue the upgraded bank notes from the central bank? We bring you their response from the Bank of Ghana. You want to stay with us here on News Night. We'll be hearing from the uh, uh, former president, Mahama, who has tonight been speaking about the latest uh, police bust relating to the illegal NI registrations, plus assuring of improved supply of premix fuel as he tossed fishing communities in Accra, plus vice chairman of parliament and energy committee, is challenging Jospon Group to go to court over claims they deserve to be local partners in controversial AGM petroleum deal instead of a three-month-old quad energy. If we have court of competent jurisdiction in this country, so if there are issues of you know, legalities, those things could be uh, you know, ironed out internally. You want to stay with us for the details here on News Night. Well, the national chairman of the opposition, NDC, Samuel Ofusuampofu, is in fresh trouble tonight. He has just been named a suspect in the many cases of kidnappings and fire outbreaks in various parts of the country. The Criminal Investigations Department of the Police Service has tonight asked the NDC national chairman to report himself to assist with investigations. So our President Mahama has in the last few hours condemned the CID's action. We'll hear from him shortly. But first, my colleague Elton Brobe uh, joins me with details of the CID invitation. Uh, this letter gives us a better sense of why, I guess, Ms. Amfofo uh, has become a prime suspect and person of interest in these serious alleged crimes. Right, so Evan, this is coming from the CID, uh, depart the CID of the Police Service, written on the 7th of May, delivered to the 8th of May, 2019. And it's a letter addressed to the National Chair of the NDC, Samuel of Usu Ampofo. The letter, the title is Letter of Invitation. Now, the body says that the Criminal Investigation Department of the Police has commenced investigations into cases of kidnapping and fire outbreaks in various parts of the country. Uh, intelligence gathered indicates that some of these kidnappings and fire outbreaks are being orchestrated by various unidentified groups persons and individuals. Some of the persons picked up already uh, for interrogation and investigation have mentioned your name, that is Samuel of Oswam Pofo, as part of a grand scheme designed to cause fear and panic in the country. As a result of the above information and intelligence, you are kindly requested to report to the uh, undersigned uh, on Thursday, that's tomorrow, 9th May 2019 at 2 p.m. to assist in our investigations. You may contact uh, the Chief Superintendent of Police, uh, one, Mr. Balfour, up in Tinyamiche, uh, they, they provided a number for any inquiry or information that you might want ahead of your uh, formal invitation. An invitation, according to the letter, is for tomorrow at 2 p.m. And it's addressed to the National Chair of the NDC, Samuel of uh, And these are very serious right. uh, crimes that mm -hmm. the police is now uh, saying, um, uh, investigations, intelligence, people they've spoken to, right. all say some of us Puffo is, and I want to quote here because mm. it's just the gravity of it. Mm. It says, your name has been mentioned as part of a grand scheme designed to cause fear and panic in a country. And the, the, the fire outbreaks, there, you were working on the holiday when there were so many of them, I think, in yeah. the central region alone. Yeah. Four within three days. Uh, the, 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 there's a market in the central region yeah, that uh, the, fire. There's a market, the central, there's a market twice. Central Markets and the uh, CCC, a popular charismatic church in Kumasi. We also know recently uh, the Lands Commission building 
uh, also caught fire, I think, was in the central region. Yeah, no, in the, in the, in the western in region. In the western region. Secondly, to be precise. And in fact, as far as the kidnappings are concerned, again, our central region has recently experienced the Indian guy who was abducted, um, were kidnapped, right. and, and we've had the three missing, the, the three missing girls. girls. And indeed, it, uh, just this afternoon, we got information from the eastern regional capital, Koforidia. Some men were arrested for attempting to kidnap some girls. Mm. The police is saying tonight in this letter to some of some people that his name has been mentioned. Uh, uh, by suspects who have been interrogated, those who are investigating the intelligence that he is behind a grand scheme. Uh, we've been checking with our CID sources, and they tell us that, in fact, the kidnappings that, for example, is wanted mm. for tomorrow uh, includes kidnappings yet to happen. Mm. Um, that's what our CID sources tell us. Well, the former president, John Mahama, has today been condemning the CID's action. No amount of harassment of our national chairman will save the MPP from defeat. Indeed, it is a sign of desperation. It is a sign of desperation that the chief, it is a sign of desperation that the chief executive of our party, the chairman of our party, is constantly being harassed by the police authorities. But let them remember that they are setting a precedent. Let them remember that in everything they do, they are setting a precedent. You cannot take any frivolous and vexatious investigation and be inviting the national chairman of the biggest opposition party every day to the CID headquarters on very useless allegations. We are advising the NPP. If you deliver on your promises, the people of Ghana will look favorably at you. But if you have failed, don't out of your desperation decide to harass our party officials. Whatever you do, you cannot escape the judgment of the people. And on 7 December 2020, the people of Ghana are going to decide, no matter what harassment you subject our people to. And that is former President uh, John Dramani Mahama. He's also the fabric of the National Democratic Congress. And let's now speak to the National Communications Officer of the party, uh, Sami Jinfi, is on the line with me. Mr. Jinfi, thank you for time here on News Tonight. How is some of Osampo for reacting to the news tonight that he's now a suspect in these kidnappings and fire outbreaks across the country? Uh, Mr. Ch our National Chairman, Honorable Samuel Osampo, is well. Uh, he's calm. But like all members of the National Democratic Congress, he is disgusted and appalled by the attempts of Tiwa Adodankwa Akufuado and the Akufuado government to subjugate our democracy and to harass political opponents. You see, Evans, the NDC is a law abiding party. We respect our law enforcement agencies. However, we will not allow this obvious attempt by the Akufuado government to constantly and persistently harass our national chairman. What is happening is what is described by our national anthem as oppressor's rule. What is happening can be described as tyrannical rule. And as citizens of this country, we must stand up against this attempt by the Akufuado government to intimidate political opponents and to suppress dissenting voices. It has happened to Ahmed Swali. It, has, it, is, it is currently happening to your own colleague, Manase Azure. It is happening to Edward Adeti of Star FM. It is happening to... Samuel Lufuswampofu and other political opponents. And what we want to tell Tiwa Dodanko Ekufuado and President Ekufuado today is that enough is enough. This nonsense of suppressing political opponents must stop and it must stop now. We can tell you that the national chairman of the NDC, Honorable Samuel Lufuswampofu, will not honor this invitation. He has been invited to assess the police in their investigations relative to uh, market fires you spoke about earlier on and the kidnappings uh, cases you, you alluded to. He has no assistance to render the Ghana police service. He has no such assistance. Not too long ago, 
the CID boss herself, Madame Tiwa Adodankwe Gufuad, who signed this shameful letter, told the whole country that she knew the whereabouts of the three Takrade kidnapped girls. She told all of us. Not too long ago, the spiritual father of our president, Prophet Uwusu Bempa, told us, that was just about two days ago, that he knows the whereabouts of the three kidnapped Takrade girls. What other, you know, what, what assistance again does the CID need on this matter to form the basis of this invitation? This is not the first time we are having fire outbreaks in markets in this country. When we were in power, the central market in Kumase caught fire on a number of occasions. Are they telling us that they were the ones responsible for that? The President Mahama at the time harassed the national chairman of the new patriotic party and elements in the then opposition MPP for the market fires who were seen all across the ten regions of this country. The charges they have come up with and the so-called intelligence they claim to have Evans is concocted, contrived, and fabricated. It is their own creation. It doesn't exist. It is not true. S- it is bogus and it is nonsensical. And nobody will cooperate with them uh, to, for them to perpetuate this illegality and this clear attempt to subvert our constitution and our democracy. Sammy, enough, two, enough. two quick questions. Um, one, I know you're an officer of the court because you're a lawyer yourself. And, of course, then that means that when it comes to uh, freedom and justice, and uh, you, you should be one of those who bears the torch. If the CID says we are investigating, CID is a, is, is a constitutional body, the police is as well. We are investigating a matter. Suspects have mentioned an individual's name. Intelligence says you may have something uh, to help us with in investigations. And they extend an invitation to you how is that uh persecution isn't that what police officials and agencies across the world do not at all that is not what police agencies across the world do because you must understand that in law there is such a thing as malicious prosecution that the laws of this country and the criminal justice system can actually be ab- abused to victimize innocent citizens. And let us also understand that by law, no citizen of this country is enjoined or is under compulsion to assist the police service in their investigations or in their work. Citizens, or if you like, criminally accused persons have the right not to incriminate themselves. They have the right to remain silent when they are accused of crimes and so on. If you look at their letter very carefully, it is clear Chairman of Popo is being accused of certain serious crimes, which I have already told you are totally baseless because you know Chairman of Popo. In the 30 years that he has served this country as regional minister, district chief executive, minister for local government and all that, everybody knows that he has discharged himself lawfully. At no point have he he been associated with anything criminal or illegal. Everybody knows him to be a perfect, peaceful, law-abiding, responsible citizen of the land. And he's not capable of the spurious and baseless allegations being leveled So, so, so you say so that... he's not under compulsion to assist them. He has no assistance to... So, 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 so he will not be reporting to the police tomorrow? He will not, I can tell you on authority, Evans that the national chairman of the Na- National Democratic Congress will not honor this invitation. And, and is this the a... Millions, it, it, the mm-hmm. millions of members in the NDC will not allow him to honor this invitation. So is this... This is our official position. Okay, good. So this, so this is a party position. I was going to ask you, is this what his lawyers have has advised? Because this decision you're taking has um, legal consequences for him. You know that. It, it has no uh, adverse legal consequences. The only thing the police can do is to go to court for an arrest warrant, which is what they would do anyway to the another invitation. When he was first invited on the basis of that doctored, you know, uh, uh, tapes, he honored their invitation. Immediately he showed up. He was placed under arrest and only released upon bail. So this is nothing new. Nobody is afraid of an arrest warrant. We see, let us make this point. We are not cowards. Yes, we are law-abiding citizens. We have respect for law enforcement agencies and that is why we've been cooperating with them 
But it has got into a stage where we need to pull the brakes, draw the line, and say enough is enough. Uh, but okay, let, 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 let me cry, let me quickly clarify something. And President Kufuado should not be allowed to do what they are currently doing. It's been happening to journalists. We've kept quiet about that. It is happening to mem- leading members of the NDC. We've kept quiet about that, and so on. We, how, for how long will we continue to allow this impunity, this state-sponsored impunity on the part of this government to continue? I want to clarify something. We know that he's already cooperating with the police uh, as far as the secret tape is concerned, which, by the way, is before a court of competent jurisdiction. When you say he's no longer cooperating with the police, are you... Is that part of that, or is just simply related to this latest invitation? His cooperation with the police in relation to the said doctor tape has ended because the matter is before a court of competent jurisdiction. His lawyers will be, I mean, we are waiting for the prosecution to make their case, and his, his defense will be opened by his lawyers. Already a notice of alibi has been filed for the second accused, the deputy national communication officer, Mr. Anthony Kwekukwai. And so we will battle, we'll be battling that case out in court, and we know that the laws of this country will vindicate his innocence. But we are saying that we, while that process is going on, we will not allow Tiwa Adodankwa Ekufuado, President Ekufuado, and such elements in this government to still come up with these spurious, frivolous allegations and as our national chairman for political purposes. Because that is what this issue is about. I mean, if you came out not too long ago to tell us that you know the whereabouts of the three kidnapped Takrade girls, why must you be calling a national chairman to come and assist you in your investigations in that matter? You, when you told us not too long ago that you know their whereabouts. You, you appreciate. Uh, you appreciate. Ghana was a serious country. Tiwa Adotankwa Akufu should have been resigned by now. So it's not fit for the office. And, and on what basis? What was the basis for that claim? For, for, for the head of the CID to come out in a press conference and tell the whole country that we know the whereabouts of the three kidnapped Takwade girls and that they are safe and that very soon we will be delivering them to their parents and all that, only for that to turn out to be a blatant lie. No, but, that, but we, that we, we, uh, there's nothing has, said, has shown that that is a lie. We, we, they haven't produced them yet. No, but, but the, the Daily Guy story is a different one. The Daily Guy says no, that the girls have been have been rescued. Issued, That's different from what the police said, that they know where they are. We issued a statement in response to that Daily Guy story that it is not true that the police know the world. Because the Daily Guy were quoting um, BNI but, but and if not know, the police. But by the way, but that, that is a, that is a, that I, wanted, I wanted to stay on, on this relevant one we are talking about. You mentioned what that the only thing the police can do once you've decided not to cooperate with them, is to get an arrest warrant. But I can point out to you that they don't need an arrest warrant. They can simply arrest him because they can hold him up to 48 hours. They should arrest him. His lawyers will come and apply for bail. No offense is, you know, unbailable in this country now. There are laws. Nobody is afraid of We are saying we will not cooperate with them. You need a man to assist you in your investigation. In a matter that you yourself claimed to, to have, you know, uh, concluded and, and to have answers to all the... Uh, issues and all that. You told us that you know the whereabouts of the ladies. The spiritual father of our president, Prophet Ushu Bimpa, says he knows the whereabouts of the ladies. Mm. The kidnapped ladies. I so, for what purpose are you inviting Chairman of this one? Purpose? Okay. So, 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 so you're saying that if the police really want him, they should simply arrest him? Exactly. That's the point we're making. He is not ready to cooperate with them. He has no assistance to render them. This is a concocted, fabricated intelligence it is their own creation meant to harass him and intimidate our supporters, and we will resist this oppressive rule. Just, just a point of correction. I know you've kept on referring to the police yari boss as uh, his full name, Adudankwa Kufuado. Well, there's nothing like that in his name. She is Mame Yatiwa Adudankwa. That's her. That's her proper name. I uh, just wanted to clear that. Okay, I'm grateful. That is that is the um, the communications officer of the National Democratic Congress speaking to us about the latest invitation to the CIA to the uh, national chairman of the party. Now there is a, a further big story today surrounding the uh, a police bust of a, a a group of people who were illegally registering people in a private residence, uh, issuing them with Ghana cards. Um, we, the police have been giving us the very latest on this. Uh, we received a report from one Abraham Nukwe, 
who was accompanied by Alessandra Ni Anna. That uh, they had information that the ongoing national ID card registration, some people were doing same in a private house around uh, St. Teresa's school. So they went into the house and removed some of the materials that they saw in the house and came and made a report to the police. Okay. So that is uh, the police giving us account of, of this. Remember that the NDC have a press conference uh, to that has had a press conference today uh, in which they're accusing the uh, NPP uh, of being behind this plot to illegally register people because that card, they believe, is eventually going to become the sole basis for registering to vote. Well, today, the former President John Mahama himself has been speaking about his calling for investigations. And I expect that the authorities of the National Identification Authority will take very seriously the recent case that happened. This is a national exercise. It is not a partisan exercise. It is supposed to register all Ghanaians of all walks of life, notwithstanding your political, religious, or ethnic affiliation. And so they should investigate what happened very well. It is alleged that some people were registering in the night in a private house. It is not correct for that to happen. And so we should find out what the circumstances were, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. But I encourage all Ghanaians to come out and register for the Ghana card. Uh, I want to bring in now the spokesperson for the National Identification Authority, uh, Francis Palm uh, Thank you for your time here on Newsnight. My pleasure. Uh, and I noticed when we spoke to you earlier that uh, the equipment that have been seized now by the police, which has been used to illegally register these people, uh, are equipment that belonged to the NIA. Uh, how did these individuals come by the equipment? Um, it, yes, it's correct that the equipment that is in the custody of the police is um, our equipment. It's what we call a mobile registration workstation. It is the equipment that captures personal data. When you go to the registration center, there's a process you have to go through. You first have to be assisted by the registration officer or his assistant to fill the forms. When that is done, the mobile registration workstation operator captures that information onto the enrollment station, which is the, the computer I'm talking about. After that, um, you move to what we call the um, card um, issuance station or the printing station. You get there before you are, the card is printed, a slip is issued to you. The slip has the information to up, which will be appearing on the face of the card on that slip. You are supposed to read through it make sure it is accurate. Once you sign it off, the card is printed. When the card is printed, it is um, handled by the persons we call card verification officers. Mm. They make sure the card is up to the standard which is required, mm. and then the card is issued to the applicant. Okay, so, 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 how, so, mm -hmm. so how did this equipment become in, get in the hands yeah, of these so, people? So I just need to give you some clarification. You need this whole process to have a card uh, an applicant issued with a card. Now, this particular incident that occurred yesterday um, is a case where the object in question is an MLW uh, machine. That machine on its own cannot register and issue cards to anybody. That equipment is just a registration device that enrolls applicants onto the system. Now, the way and manner that equipment appeared in a private residence is subject to in investigation. That's what the police are investigating. We, we would cooperate with the police to get to the bottom of this matter. But we think that um, the action taken by the individuals in the community who observed what was going on is actually what we expect every citizen of this country who happens to live in the area where our registration is going on is supposed to do. Uh, uh, we encourage that people who see things that border on crime or things that are untoward should raise their voices and protest about it. Mm, and, 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 and very briefly, uh, we know that the two individuals who are currently on the run, 
uh, who were part of the this illegal registration were officials of the well, were, were employees of the NIA who were working in your name. Uh, I just wonder um, when the re official registration ends at five. What processes is in place to ensure that they, the machines are are returned to the custody of NIA or the police? What, how tight yeah. is that process? The, the NIA the NIA has um, a supervisor responsible for every registration center. At the close of day at five o'clock, that supervisor ensures that. All machines are packed properly. All consumables are also locked up. And these equipment and the consumables are kept in a safe place and locked. That is what the practice is. If they find, if wherever they are registering is considered not to be safe, they would, cite, they would send these equipments to the police station nearest to them to keep it for the next day's work. Okay. That is what happens after 5 o'clock. Mm. So, so in this case, I guess, it's the police need to investigate how... That chain exactly. may have broken and the and the equipment ended up being used for illegal purposes. Exactly. Okay, I'm grateful that you joined us, Francis Palm Detti, uh, listening to News Tonight on Joy 99.7. If we take a short, we won't return. We have business for you. And then we'll hear um, uh, the latest uh, as far as the uh, investigations uh, into the issue uh, regarding the um, uh Quad Energy and the co conversation surrounding its ability to qualify to be a local partner of AGM is concerned. Uh, and also, we hear from President Mahama, who has been touring Great Accra today on Premix Roll. Stay with us. Um, yes, our music lives and will be live on display at the 20th VGMAs on Saturday, 18th May, a night like no other. Performing live, the 4S. Shatawali, Stoneboy, and Samini, the four Ks, Kwame Yuji, Kwesiaka, Kini, and Kim Promise, Plus Oprafo, Diana Hamilton, Abrantia Machide, Burner Boy, Casper in your vest, and more. Be part of history. Purchase tickets via Vodafone Cash and enjoy a 10% discount or buy at Nalem Shops at the mall. From Charterhouse for 400 Ghana CDs Platinum and 250 Ghana CDs Gold. For balcony tables, call 0501-288-520. The 20th VGMA, supported by TV3, DSTV, GoTV, MTV Base, KPMG, our media partners, and proudly brought to you by Vodafone. Experience real 4G on Ghana's only gigabit network. The future is exciting. Ready? Your success, our passion. Winter is here. Yeah, baby. Was champion. But you know what? Speaking of hard girls, I just got off the phone with the old lady. She's fine now. She's fine. I told her we'll call her back when you guys arrive. Cool, Charlie. Mommy definitely needs some TLC. Cool, TLC. I'm fine. But that reminds me. Mother's Day is coming up on the 12th, right? What are we doing for her? Charlie, I don't know, sir. She has everything to the extent that now when you get her a gift and you come back five months later, it is still there, wrapped and not opened. <laughs> <laughs> Help. help is here your family station joy 99.7 fm is putting together the mother's day lunch at labadi beach hotel great music check buffet lunch check welcoming ambience check and of course a great place for bonding as well totally check it's a specially curated event for mother and the whole family so bring mom over and get her pump head it's an experience that you'll all cherish for a long time single tickets are selling for 250 ghana cds double ticket for 450 ticket for three 650 ticket for four 850 you can get them at joy fm in kokumlimli and also at the watch shop in the prestige hostel opposite the upsa in madina remember 
It's on the 12th of May at the Manya Hall of the Labadi Beach Hotel. Lunch is at 1 p.m. Don't let mama's friends call her to tell her about it. Let her experience it for herself. For inquiries, you can call 0544-336-512. Join 99.7 FM. We care about you. Thank you, folks. On my air list today, show some love for Contractor EB. <laughs> <laughs> so, Contractor, yeah. what do you think about the country's changing skyline? Oh, send them down there, show you, man. Across skyline, they change you. Pa, 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 pa. Wow. Contractor, don't you get worried when you hear of buildings collapsing? I'm not for an ass one on Tassel. Mm -hmm. Nina, it is the lackability of using low quality product. Too. Please explain why. Yeah, cement is a no quality on your gasm. Village of Fefio Yosiwe, it was built with gasm. Yeah. Says the gasm, they all construct. Oh, see what pumping. She and Wani, get your tea market. Put to Kano Kumasi Airport. Keep go stadium. At Wabu Gas for your thing in a gasabo. Let's see what the quality. No one is in quality. Gasem. Three cement grates. Greater value. Gasem. The nation builder. You're welcome back to Business on News Night. And how much did the cost of the upgrade of the bank notes cost the country? We'll be hearing from the Bank of Ghana. How much did, did actually the trade ministry promises to implement policies to protect local industries? The business news on Newsnight is brought to you by MTN Business. Welcome to the new world of business. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all your office essentials. And First National Bank, we are the bank that understands your business. First National Bank, how can we help you? Now, it has become the most asked question after the Bank of Ghana decided to release upgraded bank notes with new security features. Now, these notes went out on May 6th and it will be made available to the commercial banks upon demand. We've been trying to get some answers from the head of currency management at the Bank of Ghana, John Jemphy, and this is what he had to say. We are replacing an existing one with a new one. For example, the hologram with a spark light. The hologram is a feature which has a price. And at the time that it was introduced, maybe nothing superseded it on the market. And so when we went in, it could have been at a higher price. Now, spark light have been around for up to about eight years. Initially, it could have been expensive, but over time, when the patents and things are all expired and everybody can also do it, prices keep coming down. Mm. Yeah. So it's not costing us an arm and a leg to do this activity. No, no. So what, what, what is the, the, the round figure we're looking at? Difficult <laughs> one in the sense that it is something that we always do. Uh -huh. And so always we budget for it. And everything will cost money. But we are always making sure that what we are going for. And one key thing in doing currency is that you want to make sure that the market value is far, far, sometimes a thousand times in excess of the cost of printing the banknote. And that's the head of currency management at the Bank of Ghana, John Jeffy Dan. Now, the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, Carlos Ahinkra, has assured manufacturing firms the government will look at developing new policies to support manufacturing firms in the country. It follows concerns by manufacturing firms that implementing these new benchmark values for imports will lead to unfair competition with inferior goods being imported. Now, speaking at a meeting between leaders of the biscuit, cement, and steel manufacturing firms, as well as the Alu Works, the Ghana International Trade Commission, Deputy Minister for Trade, Carlos Ayinkra, said government will explore other policies to help manufacturing firms in the country to become competitive. Now, let's turn our attention to the stock market and MTN suffered another setback with respect to that recent the price appreciation that we witnessed over this week. It is now worth 67 pesos after going down by 3 pesos. Enterprise Group also lost 4 pesos, so it will open tomorrow's trading at around 2 CDs, 10 pesos. <laughs> and that's all for Business on News night and back to you, Evan. George, thank you very much. I'm sure you're looking forward to that game between um, Tottenham Hotspur uh, playing uh, against Ajax. Um, I, um, well, I after yesterday's interesting game. I love game. the underdog story. Um, I love the underdog story. I really will want to see what happens I when Ajax... I, I want to see two EPL teams in the final as well as an Arsenal and Chelsea in the final. Uh, 
the Europa as well. Without without my team and everything, it's okay. Yeah. Thank you oh. very much, George. <laughs> <laughs> Come next year, Ivan. Yeah, you. we'll try. Now, police in the Volta region have busted 81 members of the movement agitating for an independent state, a homeland study group foundation. The members were picked up over their intended protest against the picking uh, of uh, secessionist leaders, including the chairman, Charles uh, Komi Kodruti. Now, a joint police and military team launched an assault on some members believed to be affiliated to the foundation, pushing for independent state they call Western Togoland. The arrest comes after the chairman, uh, Charles Sukumi uh, Kojoji, an octogenarian, and eight others were picked up in Ho on Sunday evening by a combined team of armed police and military personnel and, and airlifted to Accra. Uh, there's, this is the second time members of the group have been arrested in a similar uh, fashion. As far as this is concerned, the matter has already been in court today, and already we know that the coalition of youth, of Volta Youth, uh, uh, Simon Kofi Aheni says they are not in support of the Homeland Study Group Foundation succeeding from, uh, from Ghana. He wants government to dialogue with the leaders of the foundation. Now, the Vice Chairman of Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee, George Duka, is challenging Jospon Group to go to court over his concerns about the local partner uh, uh, in the controversial AGM Petroleum Agreement. Quad Petroleum, the firm set up last month, has been giving a 5% stake in the Deepwater Tunnel South oil block, despite protests from the minority in Parliament. Even before the deal was approved, uh, Metsongai, a firm belonging to the Jospon Group, petitioned Parliament, insisting they are the rightful firm that should be given the right to partner AGM and petroleum but uh, mr duca says there is a better forum to address the issue which is in court uh, let's speak to my colleague uh, parliamentary correspondent joseph gaku who has more on this you have a copy of the petition to parliament from just Pons firm what does the petition say uh, and so this is actually from their lawyers one reynold chumesi jr written on the 30th of april 2019 to the speaker and in summary they're drawing attention to the fact that the agm petroleum ghana group is a group that has um, Metsonga, which is just one's company, as a subsidiary of that particular firm. And they had heard that ACA was taking over that particular company and were introducing Quad Petroleum. And in the petition, they say they are by this letter bringing the attention of Parliament to the fact that Metsonga, which is a wholly Ghanaian company, has interest in the South Deep Water Tunnel Basin and that their interest is being overlooked without any recourse to their numerous requests for a discussion on the issue. And so they were asking that Parliament intervenes. But for uh, George Duca, this is an internal thing that they should deal with at the level of AGM or probably take it to court and the Parliament cannot be a forum to address such an issue. Uh, Metsonga had an issue with AGM and even brought up a petition. But I asked a question that if I have an issue, if I have entered into an agreement with you and you go further to you know, also enter into an agreement with another person, would that maybe my consent? I need to take you on. <laughs> not, not whatever person, uh, because you owe me a duty of care. Uh, the, the third person wouldn't have that relationship so with me. Obviously, and if we have court of competent jurisdiction in this country, so if there are issues of you know, legalities, those things could be uh, you know, ironed out internally. And I don't see, it's not the mandate of the committee to be you know, uh, assessing which company is better in terms of uh, the agreement that they independently uh, did. Otherwise, another company that is also having a relationship with Met Songai will also come and say, yes, I have a relationship with Met, Met uh, Songai, and they didn't even tell me when they were entering into an agreement with the AGM. Uh, then the chain will be on and on and on and on. And uh, the floodgates will open. And so we need to be careful as far as uh, the relationship that AGM had with the ministry is concerned. So just to give me a sense, uh, what were the concerns that they raised in their petition that what they should be the local partner and not any other company? Yes, uh, so that they have a relationship with AGM and uh, they should have been, and their two percent must also be, you know, enshrined. So they don't have and any problem with the, the agreement. And that's Sir George Duca, the AZ, uh, rank and chairman, the deputy chair of the Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament. That's it for news tonight. Tonight, up next is that commentary between Totti and Mosfer against Ajax in the Champions League semi-final. Stay with us here on Joy 99.7 FM. Game
older. Oh no, I lost again. Mommy, can you please buy me?